Bienvenue. Aujourd'hui, notre édition festival avec Martin d'Espagne et <laughs> Simon Bussier. Welcome, Simon. I always wanted to ask you where your name comes from, and I do it now. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Great to have you on the It's show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks that for the That was my invitation. little bit of French uh, from school, I know. So That's really wonderful. That exhausts my knowledge of the French language because, also. So I basically <laughs> said, you know, no, uh, no secret, uh, this is the festival edition mm -hmm. of Human Humane Architecture, and the festival is going to be the festival that you organized and curated together with many others, and two of the others we just had in the previous show, which is Carol Mon Lee's uh, Education mm -hmm. Matters with Carla and Kathy. So uh, we're going to do uh, volume two, and uh, we, we call the show here pretty much uh, Voice Yourself Too, and we mean two both ways, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't we start off with, with picture one, um, and we can probably, as we said, we can go through the first couple of pictures uh, pretty fast, but I want to say that um, we uh, arranged how we called you in the show here, and I suggested to call you um, the landscape architect because you just joined us mm -hmm. a while ago. And we're really happy to yeah, have you just this August. as as the other colleagues. And we're great to have you guys on board, and so obviously this show is not going to duplicate the previous show. It's going to complement mm -hmm. it. And whereas the previous show, naturally, because of the personalities, has been a uh, little building-centric because they're great architects. That's true. This one is going to be a little landscape-centric, right? That I, won't, I won't disagree. So, so thanks for that. I'll, uh, you'll see my bias pretty, pretty quickly in Very my students' work. And and in my tone about the way we talk about this place. Very good. But thank you very much. And you wanted to talk, thank the sponsors, I think, and if we can have number two. Absolutely. It's really important to thank our partners that are involved in this. And I, I won't be able to take any credit as a, a co-chair. Kathy Hoshar and uh, Carla Sierra and Brian Strawn have really done a yeoman's job and mm -hmm. the bulk of the work I've done really just a fraction mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to thank our School of Architecture uh, and the Office of the Dean and the folks that are behind us uh, uh, paying the bills. And mm -hmm. uh, so honestly, our professional community here in Hawaii is really phenomenal. I've never felt more welcomed by a professional community than I do here. So that includes the local AIA chapter and ASLA and APA. USGBC and the Office of Sustainability at UH, mm -hmm. among some of the other partners. There have been just uh, mm -hmm. really great, robust conversations around possible relationships and future uh, problems that might emerge that we might tackle together. Uh, mm -hmm. Because as we mm -hmm. know, there's nothing really happening mm -hmm. that one building can solve or yep, nothing yep. really in these really um, robust sets of challenges that any one of those offices yep. or yep. Uh, entities within their silos can mm -hmm. can. Uh, really emerge and, and be as heroic as they, they may have previously claimed to have been. So it's really an effort to, mm -hmm. to bring a lot of these um, yeah, voices together. And last but not at all least, to thank the next picture. Our wonderful and uh, brilliant and uh, inspirational students uh, here, Chris and Khan and Mason, uh, and the very vivid landscapes of Hawaii contrasting their, uh, their bright, smiling, uh, future thinking faces. Um, this is just a screen grab from our Instagram feed for the design festival that I would encourage everybody to check out. There's a team of social media mm -hmm. savvy young mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who are uh, grabbing different uh, you know, interviews off the street and also commenting on some of the pressing challenges that our colleagues Kathy and Carla mentioned mm -hmm. in the previous mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. And they're obviously, most obviously, representative for many others. We just can't show them all at the That's same right. time. So That's right. That's right. Bunch of dudes. Sorry. And, the, uh, and we also have amazing female emerging colleagues, right? We also want to mention that. Yeah. Although just Khan, you know, looks, has long down. hair, but he's not. He's a dude, too, right? Uh, <laughs> I have no comment. Just to, yeah, be, just to be gender correct, right? And, uh, and, yeah. and the next uh, <laughs> image here is, is basically putting, uh, illustrating what Carla and... Mm -hmm. um, and Kathy had been talking about, this is the schedule, right? This is the program. It's just written written out. And if uh, we can get the website again um, brought, then you guys can go online. There it is. That's right. And basically, you know, pick the schedule and, 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 and see what's all going on. Please take a look there. This, you know, 
first rule of PowerPoint slides is put as many words as you can on one slide, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're, we're breaking that rule, but the, uh, the, the schedule is stacked. I'll just say that there's over 40 speakers who are coming from all around the world bringing their voice to the mm -hmm, party. Mm -hmm. um, and that's complemented really beautifully by uh, a really wonderful roster of local decision makers and thought leaders mm -hmm. from a whole diverse range of backgrounds. Uh, coming together around the same table in a very public venue, which is the State Capitol building on Earth Day, which is maybe the last Earth Day. You know, <laughs> it's a very auspicious uh, celebra celebration. And thanks for uh, reminding us. Yeah, of sorry. That. Much to appreciate put it. Sort of to rain on the parade. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, uh, I, I appreciate the critical approach. We're excited about the party and the after party and the okay. and the following up discussions. Yeah, that, that would be the soon. next slide that illustrates that one, right? Yeah. Thanks for adding this as well. And you'll be on this. Roster speaking about your your work, your stratosphere mm -hmm. uh, work with your students, and mm -hmm. we have some other colleagues that'll be yeah, here yeah. as well. And I appreciate you wrapping it up. I mean, this is like usually these uh, events. You know, there's mm -hmm. this moment when the last speaker, and then everyone runs away and it leaves this sort of void, this kind of gap. Sure. Oh, I would have loved to talk and talk and chat about it. So sure. voice yourself. Uh, this is a very important sort of phasing out, right? In a in a non uh, uh, sort of conformist uh, uh, style, right? This is casual, right? This is it's a very party. purposeful, it's a party. but it's also a party. And I think that you're right. Sometimes these events are so formal and mm -hmm. stuffy mm -hmm. and esoteric, and yeah, yeah. it can be anticlimactic at the end. So we really wanted to host an event, yeah. um, and we have to we have to thank um, our great colleagues at um, um, Art at Mark's Garage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, in, in partnership with Sustainable Coastlines and yeah. Artists for Social Justice, yeah, among, yeah. among others, who yeah. are uh, really engaged in just being mm -hmm. in and of our time mm -hmm. and doing just really beautiful, good work that's thought-provoking. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so there'll be a DJ and a, a bar and a, and a mm -hmm. bit of a party vibe mm -hmm. uh, to kind of cap the evening. And we hope that some of the conversations that just got started in the festival during the day can hopefully bear some fruit out and some contacts can be made. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. again, it's, it, it does have an agenda to it, but, yeah, yeah. but ultimately uh, we, I think, deserve a little, little moment of relaxation at the end of a long day. And uh, exactly. I think that's, this will be the opportunity to yeah, do yeah. that at Mars. And, and I want to, since you mentioned, I'm going to be part of that after show party performance. I want to thank Kathy who For sure. never gives up on me and my uh, <laughs> non conventional ways and and said that's the right format and I also want to thank Bundit to be on the stage and mm -hmm. I consider the that two of them and their, and their offices as collaborative practices and Tetpole from an international perspective having the most uh, critically mm. creative voice that is and, and maybe that's the way the the conference is set up that mm. the, the the day you know is <laughs> inspiring it's uh, but it's certainly a little bit more mainstream over the day and then as it should be it becomes a little bit more avant-garde mm -hmm. becomes a little bit more edgy at the evening and again I'm I'm, 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 I'm thank you guys for putting me in the edgy part which I guess I might, I might belong so uh, that's that's great let's go to the let's go to the next picture which is actually the picture we have behind us all the time right because I want to use the chance here to uh, also get a little bit more to you since Kathy and Carla have done a great job mm -hmm. and, and sort of very selflessly, you know, talked about everything. But, but I want you to talk about yourself a little bit, not so much about your ego, which you don't have, but about what you believe in. And mm -hmm. you just came here, we were just chit-chatting before the show, we're both Waikikians, right? right? And we're both, we're both going to the water every day. Uh -huh. So we love to be here at this place. But at the same time, I know we share the worries. So mm -hmm. we're just talking, you know, water is like, oh, you go into the water. Do you also go after the rain, right? Yeah. So it's always bittersweet, right? Yeah. Or, or sweet bitter, right? Depending on how you want to look at it. So talk about this uh, sort of very intriguing collage here that the audience sees in the background all the time. What's behind that? I have to say uh, some of our students, uh, uh, Jay, Melise, and Ruben put together a really beautiful competition entry for the Alawai competition or mm -hmm. student design challenge. Talking, I think it was called, it's called Make the Alawai Awesome, I think. Uh, talking Dirty Waters, right? Talking Dirty Waters. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and this triptych is just, uh, I think, a beautiful image that really encapsulates um, a kind of three-sided 
um, situation that we face here in Hawaii. And I really appreciate this image because it speaks to the landscape in a really powerful way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're, as designers, always interested in finding patterns, finding meaning, and as a landscape architect, I tend to think of those things in uh, cultural lenses as well as ecological lenses. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, beautifully nested between Mauka and Makai, and we are really, really lucky to be a part of this vivid and uh, mm -hmm. spectacular mm -hmm. landscape. Mm -hmm. But we're not separate from the nature. It's the same in mm -hmm. many ways. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what this image is uh, speaking to. Mm -hmm. And when I have the next picture, it reminds me of that uh, you being an East Coast boy and Harvard educated. Whoops. Uh, I think you bring this uh, sort of, um, you know, very, very skilled, um, uh, you know, um, obviously talent and experience and expertise to the students here in analyzing things and diagramming things, right? So, and that's that's uh, refreshingly provocative to a, you know, critically speaking, a commodification of culture mm. here, a commercialization of culture, Absolutely. where you force yourself and your emerging architects to peel off these sort of superficially symbolic mm -hmm. layers mm -hmm. and look deeper into things, right? 100%. There's definitely a sort of mythology of the things we believe that's on the surface, but what our work, I think, my what, what my studios are really interested in doing is peeling back the surface and mm -hmm. looking deeper at more of the substantive patterns and searching for meaning in particular in that last image with the the circle diagrams this is a diagram by uh by melise and, and jay and ruben again um who were just given an honorable mention for the building voices design competition i'm mm -hmm. happy to say mm -hmm. uh, this was an early set of diagrams from some experiments they were they were doing first tracing just literally the growth patterns of a series of different plants, actually mm -hmm. weeds around mm -hmm. the urban environment. Um, weeds tend to pop up where uh, they're most resilient mm -hmm. and they can teach us a lot about being resilient to chronic and episodic disturbances mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. The second column are yeast experiments. They're basically like unbaked dough experiments that bubble up in these really weird ways and we can almost mm -hmm. use that to simulate how uh, the land mm -hmm. takes shape and changes mm -hmm. dramatically over time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the third column are a series of different images tracing water, learning how to read patterns in water. Mm -hmm. And there's some really wonderful sort of emergent forms that occur that, that uh, teach us a lot about uh, um, a, a whole series of things. I can explain that mm -hmm. more. And mm -hmm. the, the last column are the actual representations of uh, a composite of those things. So or these are some of Melise's models, um, Melise Nakoba, mm -hmm. uh, who's a really brilliant young designer mm -hmm. who uh, we're very fortunate to have the, the kinds of students we have who are just hyper switched on to the problems of the day. Mm -hmm. and I think by the mm -hmm. time they ultimately retire from their careers, it's like 2075, 2070 mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. So this whole time they're figuring out how is the world changing and then they're trying to figure out how to anticipate the change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that while they're, you know, school now yeah, yeah. In involves some vocational skill mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. it's really important that they can develop the skills necessarily, uh, necessary to, to adapt to mm -hmm. new challenges mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. shift mm -hmm. cultural or Mm -hmm. environmental or ecological or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so I appreciate that the opportunity yeah. to, to say a few things about their work yeah yeah and and going to the next two pictures um, you're you had sort of had a micro uh, methodology here right and then you you what you learn from that you basically you know it results in the macro scenario just like nature works right sure and so whereas maybe you know again complementing the last show where there were very sort of immediate you know, um, interactions and, and applications of immediate uh, mm -hmm. solutions, problem solving, mm -hmm. right? This here might be more question asking and, and saying what if and, and saying let's do it because what choice do we have and then learning by doing, right? I think absolutely. Um, there's a set of environmental concerns that's mm -hmm. really uh, thick. There's mm -hmm. a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. and what I think this project, um, hopefully what this project represents, and I think there's some evidence that it's a successful one. It was just mm -hmm. given an honorable mention mm -hmm. by an uh, uh, international peer-reviewed jury, peer jury yeah, yeah. which includes mm -hmm. a lot of really wonderful uh, people. Um, 
but this project is primarily interested in the impacts in daily life. Mm -hmm. And so we have to oscillate between the large scale and the small scale mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. some things make sense and mm -hmm. are legible. And, uh, and yet we also have to be kind of, let's say, um, alert to consequences of our good intentions mm -hmm. and be re receptive to uh, the possibility that our... Um, our mm -hmm. ideas may fail. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a really vague response to your question, which is a really good one. But I would just say that there's a lot of tensions and there's yeah, opposition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There are, there's this sort of apparent chaos. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's not chaos. I think mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. because we can't put nature into a little neat box and mm -hmm. understand it, mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that means that it's um, chaotic. I think mm -hmm. that that means that ideas of determinacy or yeah, yeah. preconceived solutions mm -hmm. are often going to meet resistance. Mm -hmm. Static mm -hmm. objects in the mm -hmm. face of mm -hmm. climate change and sea mm -hmm. level rise, mm -hmm. for instance, um, sea walls that are overcome, yeah, or yeah, yeah. you know, communities um, built out of sort of inflexible mm -hmm. grids, mm -hmm. like we see at uh, you know uh, the result of Hurricane Sandy. We see communities sort mm -hmm. of ravaged by yeah, yeah. Um, you know wave and you know inundation from mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. from from water. Mm -hmm. We can, I think, we can we can use that and actually mm -hmm. use those patterns, use the FEMA uh -huh. uh, predictions, um, mm -hmm. and make some determinations about better placement, uh, mm -hmm. more optimum placement. And a good illustration how this sort of chaotic, creative curiosity mm. can play out is number ten, right? Sure, if I think we just zoom number, zoom in maybe on that plan. If we can get number ten, uh, oh, sure. yeah, there we go. Sure, here's a couple of opportunities that the students identified along, uh, the top is along the Manoa stream mm -hmm. corridor, and their intervention is one that adopts the low E principles of passive irrigation um, along a sort of sequence of descending terraces. Uh, so water is not just a thing you get into a pipe and get rid of, but mm -hmm. water, is an, water is wealth and water is life, and it's a sort of Rather than looking at it like a problem, you look at it in terms of its abundance. And As it's it used to be, by the way, right? Not such a crazy mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. There's just an enormous amount of knowledge in, embodied in the landscape here. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is not an appropriation. Rather, it's a uh, very humble uh, and respectful uh, re-centering, re reinterpretation mm -hmm. for a contemporary Honolulu. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and the bottom image, which I think complements the top really well, is taken from the Alawai Canal, uh, where my wife and my dog and I live. Mm -hmm. uh, and this waterway is, you know, almost annually uh, recognized as one of the most polluted. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a whole series of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So the students are being highly aspirational. This image shows the possibility for uh, new uh, new uh, beds of plants, uh, phytoremediatory plants, so plants to clean water, and um, possibilities for doing some soil recharge and, and soil regeneration. Mm -hmm. So it'll take a while to, um, you know, see these kinds of things rebound or yep. these kinds of places mm -hmm. that have suffered for so long. Yeah, um, was, as you know, around what, like turn of the. It was easy to pollute it, but it's not as easy, equally as easy to fix it, right? Sure, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and yet I think there's there's a good likelihood that um, that it's an all hands on deck approach mm -hmm, to solving mm -hmm. the problems, and it mm -hmm. shouldn't be necessarily just mm -hmm. left to the Army Corps of Engineers to mm -hmm. determine what's best mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. But maybe the community um, can see that as a place where they come together, mm -hmm. and I ultimately think that's a really important aspect of what landscape architecture does, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is to say that you know despite all the growth pressure and development pressure. Mm -hmm. um, Cities around the world are competing with each other, but also neighborhoods are competing with each other for households and mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. new forms of life. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think there's a really acute need for big open spaces that people can come together yeah, in. Yeah. And the programming can be um, can encompass ecological solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. programming doesn't have to just be open green lawns mm -hmm. or, um, or or beaches made out of sand that we import from somewhere else. They can be they can be uh, really powerful, humane, accessible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contemporary, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. vibrant spaces mm -hmm. that come together through a process of collaboration and uh, people coming together. Fits right into the theme of the show. And before we run out of time, because time goes so fast, we want to spend the rest of the show uh, basically on the project cool. uh, that you're dealing with in studio right now. 
uh, with your emerging uh, colleagues and which once again shows that where is the other why there's also a, a competition you mm -hmm. know has been launched by the university mm -hmm. the office of sustainability so these are very prominent uh, you know topics that mm -hmm. seem sort of catchy right mm -hmm. and and kind of trendy almost uh, although it's probably not the right word, but but you choose something that's rather sort of unspectacular, right? Mm. That's an area which is usually not on every, anyone's radar or hardly un unless the people who live there, right? Which part is that? And that's number 11. Yeah, I would just like to give Waipahu a plug mm -hmm. and talk about this really incredible community. This satellite image shows the just diversity of landscape patterns you can see, you know, two shield volcanoes draining into Pearl Harbor. You can see the most turquoise water in the world uh, just below that. Um, you can see the, you know, agricultural fields. You can see rich jungle. You can see mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sort of uh, this incredible amalgam of different cultures settling in um, post-plantation era. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and in, in many ways, this is a really important place in the history of Oahu, as as previously it was the capital. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's it's as its name suggests, it's about mm -hmm. water bubbling up and yeah. uh, coming to the surface, and it's about a meeting place, it's about a gathering place, mm -hmm. which is what you see today in the yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah, However, yeah. if you look at the again, the satellite image shows really clearly this kind of interruption that the urban mm -hmm, settlement mm -hmm, pattern mm -hmm. has yeah. um, imposed, well, sort of superficially, yeah, yeah, on that yeah. otherwise beautiful. Uh, yeah set of interconnected and accruing and sort of self-modifying, self-regulating uh, landscape yep. patterns. So out well, the window of the airplane, we, we need we to We call that mapping, you know, see which it. is a form of diagramming. I mean, right. because you don't perceive this, you know, in its potential and its sort of genetic code when you yeah. drive there first. I mean, for my very first time driving west, I was like, oh my God, a multi-lane highway interstate which isn't an interstate because it doesn't connect another state so this mm -hmm. was all surreal to me I thought like this is in LA I, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it right so you need to look at it in an analytical way and saying if you peel off all these layers if you make sort of changes in, in individual ways and that gets us to the to the number 12 where just simply here through a very radical kind of color coding you basically uncover unveil uh, a, a restoration of of a tradition, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the rail project that will that is aligned with the Farrington Highway mm -hmm. that has a series of different stations along the way is really the the catalyst for the project that we started uh, earlier this year with the the state and the city. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're in cahoots with those guys uh, because I think we're really interested in having a conversation about what these transit oriented developments will be mm -hmm. and. Uh, What's really striking when you're there is you can't even perceive the fact that you're in this place that has this water richness, mm -hmm. and you can't really even see Pearl Harbor from there. You can't see your waterfront, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it's striking. It's striking how hot it is, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's also striking that uh, that you're so disconnected from nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so any efforts to conceive of sort of urban cooling, mm -hmm, as it were, mm -hmm. should involve a threading through of water systems, mm -hmm. blue and green belts. Mm -hmm. um, but they should also, I think, correspond with those existing cultural uh, layers as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. So as a station emerges, it's one that's a consequence of a process of studying those layers mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and really understanding yeah. what the possibilities are for that, rather than sort of an imposition of an object that's like levitating. And this is interesting the because sky. there is like the architect and, and the landscape architect, yeah. like that you say, hey guys, you know, hey. rather than throwing this chunk of something, you know, down there, yeah. why did you let it emerge? Why didn't you let it grow is maybe a too oversimplified way, but if we can get the pictures 13 and then 14 and 15, this is a really interesting approach, how you said it should basically emerge and grow sure. out of the, the natural and cultural and, and multitude of landscapes. Here's just a series of different hillshade uh, diagrams that are looking at a uh, series of different specific analytical readings, mm -hmm. and we can talk more about each one if it's, if it's useful. But suffice to say, there are uh, specific temperatures mm -hmm. and specific wind speeds and mm -hmm. specific... Mm -hmm. Um, sounds um, extremely loud right under the highway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, what that really enormous piece of infrastructure will do is reflect a lot of the sound it will um, in in many ways intensify a lot of these things mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that's something that we're interested in 
trying to understand through the mapping exercises and mm -hmm, the, the mm -hmm. an analytical stage of the process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when you're there, as this image shows, you're really looking at a very low scale, low density, uh, automobile centric environment with now this, this rather imposing piece of heavy infrastructure that mm -hmm. looks like it's sort of it's sort of ominous and it's sort of um, reflecting a, almost like a different time. It's sort yeah, of, it's it's sort a of dinosaur. Like we're going back in time to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, and there's like myriad benefits to, you know, mobility. And mm -hmm. that's not of something course. that we can necessarily unpack in this short amount of time mm -hmm. we have. But mm -hmm. let's say that this thing is happening and yeah. what can what can we do about it? So that would be the um, next picture, you know. Vision. Again, yeah, we have this kind of steadfast optimism about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So then there's a superimposition in some ways of these uh, layers of data. This mm -hmm. is looking at light, so you see the you know underside of the bridge is mm -hmm. going to be quite quite shaded. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you know, taken together, there's multiple. Uh, yeah. layers that we yeah. stack and we mm -hmm. start to mm -hmm. look for uh, opportunities yeah. to create a structure that is reflecting the existing uh, cultural and ecological patterns including yeah. you know, yeah. all these things wa from water to light and sound yeah. to yeah. human access. Which the next picture shows shows in plan how this new rain, uh, rail station emerges from uh, the specificity of the place and as you indicated we're running out of time here in the show so I want to spend the, ne the last two minutes about chit-chatting about uh, sort of our obligation and mission as educators and, and, and what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to sort of put a sort of a disclaimer at the end of the show uh, in saying while the whole symposium doesn't uh, basically reflect sort of the values and uh, virtues of, of this program here in ThinkTech Hawaii, uh, your uh, specific work certainly does it. And, and, and if things don't, we need to confront these, right? So we're mm -hmm. like, uh, some people might look at your work and my work as being weird. And we <laughs> take this as a compliment because we believe that if we encourage our uh, emerging colleagues to be these provocateurs, they're going to elevate the profession. I mean, they're going to run the show pretty soon, right? It's true. So I, I really appreciate you being that provocateur, that rebel. Mm -hmm in shaking things up and, you know, being on the search rather than saying, I have a solution, right? Absolutely. I, I, let me just say, um, I really want to, I should give a shout out to our colleague Judith Stilgenbauer, who's really been quarterbacking this new MLA, this Master of Landscape Architecture program, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which will be the first of its kind, which is really site dependent. Mm -hmm. I talked about site specificity. Mm -hmm, I want to mm -hmm, talk about mm -hmm. site dependency because mm -hmm. here we can study how land is created Mm -hmm. uh, we can see some of the most interesting kind of pan-Asian, pan-everything mm -hmm. uh, fusion of cultures in urban contexts that's, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. some of the most hyper-urban um, anywhere in the world. We can also see some of the most incredible conservation efforts and, and things on our archipelago in mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. sort of unique geographies. Mm -hmm. and. The program that she started that um, some of us are, are going to be involved with um, is really a profound leap ahead for mm -hmm. the state of Hawaii. The fact that we're, um, we're here in this time I think is, is, is wonderful. We can spend more time sort of dwelling on all the different challenges, mm -hmm. the substantial complex challenges, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I think it's also really um, it's really wonderful to think of our students who will be the principals of the next generation of design firms. Absolutely. That, that they don't exist yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we don't know what their names will be, mm -hmm. and we don't know what kind of projects will emerge that mm -hmm. they'll make a name for themselves through. Mm -hmm. But let's just say that there's a lot of uh, really uh, wildly aspirational people who are coming up through the School of Architecture program and through uh, SOEST and through Sea Grant and mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. tropical plant soil science and yeah, through sustainability yeah. and through yeah, urban yeah. planning and all these different offices. Um, and, you know, I think they're wildly optimistic and they're also pretty disruptive. Mm -hmm. And I think that they end up through this kind of series of provocative projects as students develop a vocabulary for themselves rather absolutely. than like mini-me's. So absolutely. when yeah, they right. get to practice, they can be disruptive agents for change, which is, as we know, a key yeah. mandate for yeah, design. Yeah. You can't yeah. uh, continue to do the same stuff mm -hmm. that your mm -hmm. your parents gave you. Know, gave so us. I take your, uh, rather than mini-me's, as a closing note, uh, uh, pretty much uh, of, of your message, which was great. 
Thank you. We didn't get to a lot of things, and particularly not that you took on this conference as the other ones. It was presented to you, and you put a lot of other things on the side that you actually do, which we wanted to talk about. And didn't oh, thank get you for to. that. But you also take advantage of this here and, and let it sort of feed into, into your research and into your work. Thank you. Again, hopefully we get the chance to talk about that another time. And sure. thank you for pulling all this, and thanks for putting it all together. And again, uh, we see you guys all on Saturday at the Capitol for the various events. Go to the website again, and, uh, and it will be awesome. It sure will. Right. Thanks, Martin. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>